I know you don't smoke weed. I know you. But I'm gonna get you high today. Because it's Friday. You ain't got no job. And you ain't got shit to do. Yo, 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 it's your boy Big F, aka the Double Vodka Don. With my co-host, Yo Ain't Jesse, SoundCloud God. Burr. The real MVP, MVP of the podcast, Bruce Chicago and Cooper on the one to two are, you know, it's smoke breaks. We're back. Yo, I just want to say, I noticed it last week when I was editing the pod, when you normally do the clap in, last week you smacked your head, this week you smacked the chest. So don't think it's not going unnoticed. I am not noticing the clap ins. It's, I appreciate Listen, it. Listen, that's, that's the MVP of the podcast. He notices those small details. They may, that may seem like nothing to just your average podcast producer, ours. Everything goes into account. He listens to you hit your taco beef. And the reason for that, last week, I was going, I had, the hair's still, I'm still, it's still tight up top, weekend, but I just got the fresh dome shave, so I was really, that that slap just hits a little extra when you have just, when you're bald, bald, like shiny Mr. Clean bald. Maybe we'll give a little, give a little chest a little love today. Got no shirt on in the, in the hotel room. Did you just make love? Is that why you're all crispy and clean? And fresh, no shirt? I didn't, if by definition, just, if you count like an hour and uh, like two hours ago, just then sure. You need to recreate the Rick Ross on the couch photo. I would. Send me, send me it after or right now. And I'll do, that actually would be a great, I should, I should do that for like TikTok too. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe instead of mimicking TikTokers now, you can mimic like, Big ball. Oh, you're actually. That would have been way better before you started losing weight. I was gonna say you could just like imitate Rick Ross on TikTok when like. Yeah, but, yeah, but Rick Ross there. has lost. Rick Ross has lost weight too. Like me and him are probably in about the same. Like, I would say right now we're about in the same size category. Yeah, I guess I'll give you that. Because he's like, because he lost. Like me and him are the same. Like it's where you're still like we're still like listen we're every everything in life is relative. This is how I see it. Everything in life is relative. We are, we're both much smaller than we previously were, but just compared to the average human being, we're still big. Yeah. We're still, he- we're still heavy set gentlemen. I don't think it's like ever, like, I've we've said this before, but I don't think you're ever going to be like fucking 160. No, I don't think I could. Well, actually, so I think I said this before with the app I have on the, like that I would do my weight with that, like it like reads all your like fat and like all like that kind of stuff. It said my, if my body had, zero percent fat like 0.0 i would still weigh like one like almost 170 i think it was like just under 170 so that right there should sound big bone because i'm like 510 510 and a half and you see plenty of 510 dudes that are like 160 yeah so if my body is like physically incapable of getting essentially under basically under 175 probably because i don't think you can live with under what a few percent body fat how could you have no body fat at all People have like one percent body fat, but then like you can't really, like, n- yeah. But they're like triathletes and people. Who I thought the I thought like the least you could have was at least like like three four percent. No, I'm pretty sure you can have like at least like an under one even. I have very low body fat. But what what's very low? You gotta have what like ten? I don't know my exact number. I, I have a scale that measures it. I don't know how accurate it is, but it says I have twelve. It says men should go no lower than two to five, but like if I'm sure kids in fucking like. Ethiopia have no body fat. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I didn't want to get dark with it. We're start talking about like starvation. Men require at like yeah, at least two to five percent body fat to for their body to function properly. So it is there possible, but it's not. There you go. So I guess so. Yeah. So realistically, I probably couldn't even like it would be physically impossible for me to get under probably about one seventy five, which I would which, which, which I would say by definition would make me like the big bone thing would give some, some accuracy to it. Yeah, I guess so. Cause I mean, how, how, uh, what, what are your measurements, Jessica? How tall are you? How much do you weigh? Six, one, one ninety. I, I probably, I'm probably like 10. I would probably say I'm like 10% body fat, I would guess. But I feel like you couldn't get, m- I mean. When I was I, in high I, school, I, I, I was I the same like height in 160. Like, Cause I was going to say, if you were like 160, 170, you'd be so small. I would look so frail. I was a stick. That's what I'm saying. You'd be tiny. I don't think, I think if I really wanted to, I could get down to like 175 and, but I would just feel so like physically weak. Actually, I don't know if I could now. Cause it's, I'm just, I, I have like a big chest naturally and my, I'm out of nowhere. I'm start, starting to get like kind of a fat ass, which I, I didn't like originally, but I kind of like now. I, I don't know where I would, I would lose weight. 
I, I guess maybe like my mid torso area, but I don't know if I, you can just like lose weight in like your upper chest and ass cheeks. You definitely can your ass cheeks, but I don't, I don't really think I have too much room to wiggle with where I could get down to like 160 healthily. I wish I had more ass. That's one thing as a big guy. I have such a flat ass. I might have more ass than you. You a you a thousand percent. Anyone like anyone on the planet has more ass than me. I'm kind of my you. ass. My ass literally just goes like it's just like a fucking. It literally, honestly, no shit. I look like that. Uh, that picture, like the little, like the little, like French bulldog or pug or whatever it is, like standing at the refrigerator. You seen that meme? Uh-uh. Where it's like it's like the little pug. It's like stand up and it was like oh how how all you dudes looking like skinny jeans. Oh, and it's yeah. literally just it's so funny like the picture because he's just because how like obviously a pug is shaped like they're like they have I mean, obviously they're small dogs but when he's like standing up on like his two like just the two hind legs it's like he's all it's like his belly's all like thick and then it's just like just like as his ass goes like in like it like slants like in and down and that's literally what my butt does so it's like when you laugh your ass off too hard literally i've i've laughed i've laughed my ass off one too many times well we're on the topic of asses the most viral Boom. story of the week was that Slim Danger, Chief Keith's baby mama, went on the No Jumper podcast. They have a new – I didn't think they were doing this, but they actually gave the fucking thoughts, um, Selena Powell and the AJ girl, whatever the fuck her name is, the one who said she's super with the whole sons. They gave them their own show on No Jumper. It's called The Thoughts Next Door. Which I don't know how I feel about that because they're just like hyper thoughts that – get views but only because they call out people that they slept with which is kind of fucked up in my opinion but whatever it gets views i fuck with that name i might steal that name slim not, slim, da- slim danger is fire name I'm slim danger yeah, it is. slim you should change your uh, instagram name from coops there it is to slim danger slim danger, <laughs> slim danger. <laughs> But Slim Danger, who is not a good-looking girl by any stretch no, of the imagination, no. not someone you'd think celebrities would be flying out, said that Odell Beckham Jr. flew her out, told her not to wear drawers, not to shower, and to shit on his chest in the house of coitus. And when she could not shit on his chest, he told her to go home and send her a video of her pooping. And she did. She did not provide any proof of this besides her actual testimonial. But... Obviously, the internet went crazy with it. Odell didn't necessarily deny it or really address it. He just kind of put up a picture, and I think his caption was like, "No, no, none of this shit can stop me." And then all, all it was, no, it was, it was, um, it was basically just gotta take like the the like whatever life like throw, like when life throws shit at shit you. At like you. That kind of thing. That's what it was, and people were commenting on it like it's not it's not the shit that's on you, it's the shit that's inside you. Everyone was kind of clowning <laughs> with it, like all his teammates and stuff. So from that kind of made me feel like Odell was kind of saying like this is bullshit, this is not real. I'm just like trolling this a little bit, but I'm not gonna give it enough attention. But then again, there's been a lot of people saying like Odell might like this. Oh, did this really happen to Odell? One, do you guys think Odell takes fucking Cleveland Steamers to the chest? And two, do you think he's going to address it ever? Or this is the end if he's going to – we're going to hear from him about it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer it in reverse. I don't think he's going to ever – I don't think – that's one of those things you can't – you just can't really address it either way. Yeah. I think he – I think doing what he did probably was handling it the best that you probably could given the circumstance and just that one like there's no real way to prove that it didn't happen and i just think there's it's one of those things where it's kind of like um when if if someone says something about you that's like true but like everyone like it's one that like if something far-fetched like that like that i guess that would be the kind of play like the uh oh yeah like no doubt like definitely like that kind of thing you know what i'm talking about yeah you kind of just like you like just like sarcastically like agree when obviously they're taking this like you're not agreeing i almost feel like that's kind of the the way he took it. Do I think, do I think that he did it? Very possibly. I'm not gonna really? be like, I'm not gonna say like 100 like yes, no doubt, because these girls have absolutely have a motive to lie. So right there, like that is enough to at least at a minimum give him a little bit the benefit of the doubt, and just because it's just these are just literally thoughts, just like talking out their ass. And I remember. I believe I said this when we talked about the whole Suns thing that I remember, I believe I kind of called the shot that I said, this is going to keep happening. Cause oh, I thought you said you called the shot that Odell likes fucking. No, 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 not that, not that. I called my shot that this was going to keep happening. And I think, and now I'm calling it again, that this is now going to keep and keep happening because when you see a girl like that girl, the first one, the Suns girl, 
who made whatever, 60,000, 100,000 off OnlyFans in two days. And girls start seeing, oh, there's real money in this. And there's, and there's way more money in it if you name drop. Where I feel like in the past, name dropping was kind of that taboo. Like, you, you can, like, tell the story kind of thing, but don't, like, say names. But I think these girls are seeing that. That story, would it have went viral? Maybe. No, no chance anywhere near as viral if she doesn't drop the name Odell Beckham. And I think now you're going to see more and more of these girls do this once they see, like, the money that comes in the, the – I don't know what word, like, virality? Is that even a word? No, it's a word. The, vi- the virality of, like, of dropping the name with the story. So I think now it's, like, the respect of, like, the names are going out the window. So I think, like, it's a weird thing. Like, I – she was almost – she would, do I think a girl could drop, like, a story like this? 100% could make it up. She did have a lot of detail. Like, she even got deep into, like, she showed up, and there was peroxide in the bathroom and this and that. I don't know why when she dropped the peroxide line, it caught me a little bit. Like, I was like, damn, like, that's very specific. I don't know. I just Do think, I think like, like, if you're the girl, are you, like, doing this? Like, it's just as bad that you're the one actually taking a shit on someone. Well, let me, worse. Well, let me, let me address that, too, because I think – I think because so many people – I think the one first obvious question is I know, – well, I know I saw this – Someone posted this. It was a picture of the girl that either used to date or, like, is dating now or whatever. Obviously, like, gorgeous girl. Gorgeous young girl. Like, very, very attractive. And so many people are like, oh, like, what, like, this is, oh, I think it was a girl kind of like a men bash. Like, oh, like, this is why men are trash. Like, he's out here hooking up with, like, this girl over, like, this girl. And I agree with that from, like, that perspective. That makes sense to bring that up. But I think the appeal with a girl like that is that she'll just do whatever you want. And I think speaking from a man's perspective, there is like some, there is like some, um, I don't want to say like attractiveness, but there's some like kind of like a, like a deep, like sexual desire type thing to fill of just like, uh, like just ha- a girl that will literally not shit on you, but just that will do anything that you want, literally anything. I think that's what like, that's why these, these guys like hang out with like the Selena Powell's and the Suns girl and like a girl like this, like a slim danger. Everyone had a girl like this. Do, they will just do anything that you want. Like that is the appeal. Everyone had a girl like that in, in high school who like, for sure, there was a rumor that at whatever, whatever party she sucked off three dudes or she fucked mm-hmm. four dudes. Like it was always you know, the, the like not hot, but emo chick who just had massive tits. Big yep, emo girl. Yep. Yep. Like not yet. Yeah, definitely. Like not like not the, definitely not the most attractive, but not usually they're yeah. usually their, their <laughs> habits are disgusting, but they're usually not like, their, their habits make them disgusting, but, like, if you just took them, like, physically, they're usually not, like, disgusting looking. They're just, like, eh. It's one of those but things. They'll do, but they'll do it, whatever. You don't want to get caught up necessarily in the rumor, but if you're alone and it's happening, you, like, you're, like, oh, fuck yeah. And it's also someone who's a sure shot. It's almost, like. Exactly. If, if there's a, is a, a brand new, not a brand new, it's an ice cold Coca-Cola and you could that you could crack or there's some exotic new mountain dew fucking strawberry banana purple twist that maybe costs a little more and you don't know if it's going to be good like the strawberry banana mountain dew is the hot like girl you guys have put work in but the coca-cola is classic it may not be you know the greatest but it's a sure shot every time like this girl is a coca-cola I man i might be giving her too much credit as a coca-cola she might be like an rc cola but you know off brand but you know what you're getting it's just a sure shot every time and even though these girls are like slores because like you said because they put it out there that they're willing to just fuck everybody guys are disgusting like putrid creatures that are going to chase easy pussy or easy cleveland steamers apparently at all times yeah, see, to me, it's, it's – the appeal isn't – like, I, I don't think the appeal is that they fuck everybody. The appeal is that they will do anything you want. Like, the appeal is that you have a girl that is so raunchy and so, like, out there that she literally would shit on you if you wanted her to. Regardless – and going back to kind of the whole, like, the name-dropping thing, it's so crazy just dropping these names. It's honestly, like, so, like – it's almost like, do you believe that she was smart enough – to use an Odell name drop with the whole Cleveland Brown, like the Browns okay. shit, Cleveland Steamers. Like, was she smart enough to know that no way. all these things, like, will make, like, just having all these funny puns and, like, like that with just the fact that he plays for the Browns. Like, all these funny puns will in, 
in like retrospect will like drive up um like internet engagement and drive up internet views and all these things like all these little things these little intricacies that kind of lead into it that like almost make it bigger so i think little things like that like say if you just said or if she just said someone that played for like the Steelers, I don't know. Like I'm saying, just the Jets, like a team that doesn't have like brown jerseys and like brown innuendos and like Cleveland steamer, Cleveland Browns like attached to it. It's either the worst lie ever, or it's like so perfectly that the world has meshed into this one story and like everything is just colliding. Like it just works out too perfectly if it's real. I think it it is just a coincidence that he plays for the Cleveland Browns, that the Cleveland steamer thing exists. I don't think there's any way this girl like came back and like, you know, the, the board of like Charlie Kelly, a meme of Charlie Kelly and from it's always sunny Philadelphia, like yeah. pointing at, at all the fucking lines going different directions. I don't think she was like sitting at home constructing this magnificent lie about how she's going to make the perfect meme out of Odell Beckham taking a shit or getting a shit taken on his chest. But I do think, in my opinion, I think this is 100% just something get, getting thrown at the wall. I think Odell probably fucked her. I feel like Odell is probably into freaky shit. I mean, the video went viral of him. I mean, he wasn't doing anything, but of him with that white girl doing blow didn't really – he wasn't doing blow, but he was next to her. She didn't really seem like she was that hot. And I feel like sometimes these celebrities just want these girls that are going to give them an easy nut so they can fly him out and then fly him back. But I don't think he expected any of this. I really just think that this girl sees an opportunity to maybe air him out and take her viral moment. Because Selena Powell is is someone who lied about getting pregnant by Offset. Like, she has no moral high ground, right? I feel like they probably told her before coming on, like, just drop, name drop and say something wild so we can go viral. No, because that's – and that's what I'm saying. Like, there's – now that we're seeing, like, these girls can see there's real money in the name dropping, it's just going to keep, like ex- – it's going to keep accelerating and accelerating more and more. Like, it's just going to keep escalating. We're get, like, especially now that – no jumper has kind of like given them this like platform to essentially out people, which I think it's weird because even hearing him talk about the initial sons thing, he even kind of was like, he said like he still would have posted it, but it was live. So he had like no choice, Yeah. but he was saying, he was like, I would have had a real decision to make. Like if I wanted to like drop it or not. And then, but now it's almost like you almost, it's like you kind of put yourself in that world. So it's kind of like once the floodgates open, I guess you might as well make money off it. I don't really like, I guess, from a, I mean, from a moral perspective, I would say I wouldn't agree with it. Cause I think it's, it, it definitely is fucked up to eat. Like even, even if say he was like this hundred percent true story, complete was telling the truth about everything. This really happened. I still think there is some like respect to like, not like just out that to like the world, just because like you have no care about like what anyone thinks of you doesn't mean that you have to just out like this dude who has like every I mean I don't think he's gonna like lose anything like I don't think he's gonna lose like money or like endorsements or anything over the story but he has a lot to lose just like in his life like he's young he's rich like he's got like he's a, a huge public figure like one of the most famous one of the more famous athletes like in America I think they're responsible very emotionally unstable and is like a train wreck in those situations. So with football, like just starting up too, like it's all just still perfect. And this is the last thing Odell needs of all athletes. Like, like you're saying, he's emotional, emotional wreck. Also, he had a terrible year last year yeah. and he, he's the, like the last superstar athlete that I think needs something that's a distraction on the field. Like he needs to come back, like show and prove and have an Odell year. And I, I it seems like he's kind of just like not letting this get in his, you know, put in the rear view mirror. I hope that he continues to do so because even though I'm a fucking not a giant fan, I always admired Odell's skill and I want to see him succeed. Uh, I think that Adam has doesn't have like a, a responsibility to censor what people say on his podcast. I think he has a responsibility to not put these people on his podcast after the these two instances. Like, what good? I mean, I guess it's good because. It goes viral and it brings business in, but it's just so fucking trashy, man. I looked at Slim Danger's Instagram profile. I don't, I didn't like click on anything deep. Like I didn't click on her OnlyFans or whatever, but she did have an OnlyFans link and her bio was the real Slim Danger and then a water emoji. And then she said the squirt queen. So I guess in, in like, addition to, yeah, like, like vaginal geez. ejaculation squirts, but I guess in addition to, pooping on guys she's a big squirter so i don't know if a, girl, if a girl's ready to brand herself as a squirt queen it doesn't seem too far-fetched that she will shit on someone i have a, a weird situation to uh or would you not would you rather uh, a, a weird scenario to put you in 
So I'm, I'm not going to hypothetical situation or create a hypothetical situation with Slim Danger doing this, but I'm going to pick like, <clears throat> let's think of a, a legendary, beautiful woman. Maybe not one who's like a celebrity now. Pick, pick someone who's like a, an old timey, Pamela Anderson, her prime. We'll go with that. Pamela okay. Anderson, prime oh. Baywatch days in the 90s. Actually, how about this? Go with, I don't know what this is in my head. Go with, just because I feel like a lot of America has seen her recently. Go with Carmen Electra, just because we've seen her in the, just okay. recently in the Last Dance documentary, and she was looking phenomenal. Okay, so Carmen Electra, Dennis Rodman era. You're mm. just regular you, but 20 years ago, and Carmen Electra, for some reason or another, approaches you. You're on the floor of a casino in Vegas. You got a room upstairs, and she just, for some reason, she's struck by you, and she grabs you, and she goes, hey, come up to my room. You know, I think you're cute. Let's, let's get after it. You get in, in the bedroom, and she tells you to lay down on the floor, and she wants to shit on your chest. But it's only going to be like a Tootsie Roll size poop. Do you let that happen in order to continue your night of coitus with Carmen Electra, or is that drawing the line? Like, I think there's a degree of like a girl that's hot enough, and as long as the poop is not as disgusting, like if it's not, if it's a solid I'll little like just that, one log, I'll you let it happen. That to me, how can you guarantee that? I, I am guaranteeing it. I'm get, that, this is a scenario. It's just hypothetical. It's, it's, you, you, you it's can my make hypothetical. Girl. Yeah, it? I can make it. How it's big a t- size of a tootsie roll. It's like a it's like a dog, like a mini dog poop. Are we talking the long tootsie roll? Or are we talking the little OG little one? mini one? Oh, I'm assuming mini. no brainer then. Yes, I mean yeah. How long is a long tootsie roll? Like three three inches? Like that long? Yeah. No, would probably, you, yeah, yeah, probably two. Not and a half not the mini one. It's it's the it's the full size tootsie roll, but it's the full width of the tootsie roll too. Like tootsie roll texture. It's definitely smells. It's not wet. Would you let that happen? Are, are we talking? Are we talking like one of the like like the thick tootsie rolls, like the ones that has a little white binder thing around it? In the uh, package, no, are we talking like this, the thin normal one that's long? The thin normal one that's long. Not the king size, not the little tiny okay. mini uh, tootsie like three roll. Inches, like, like three inches-ish. A like. three-inch tootsie roll. Yes. Are, are, no, I think I, that's a no-brainer, right? No-brainer. If it's any random Joe Schmo, no. But Carmen Electra with just a little baby tootsie roll, yes. Is it right. one of those that – let me ask this. Can I, can we do that first and just get that out of the way? That's what I was going to say. Can I go shower after? And then can I like, can she do that? Like get that out of the, get it out of her system. I can go wash up, like take a shower and then just like have like go crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I think you could do that. I think honestly that you'd want it at the end probably. Like I think you'd nah, want I think I'd, no, I'd, I, think I'd, I almost think I'd rather get it over with like regroup, like get my head right in the shower and then just like clint i just i would just i can mentally tell myself that it didn't happen there's once yeah. it's like over it's over there's no way i'm finishing and i'm tired and then like and now she's like okay now i'm gonna shit on you i'm like no. yeah because yeah because then well, I'm, you're then gonna shower afterwards anyway uh, it's too no, shower but here no, no no colin's right colin's right because you don't want to you want to leave this experience on a high note you don't want to leave that room with the last thing being getting shit on you want to get the shit out of the way and then just have a nice lovely time with prime Carmen Electra and then you leave you you zip her up you put your pants shirt back on you walk out of that room like a fucking champion but if you walk out directly after a shit you're walking out with like your tail between your legs agreed and I also think Carmen Electra would pro- probably does take like cute little tootsie roll shits I don't think Slim Danger does it, though Slim Danger looks oh, like Slim someone Danger who- looks like she takes nukes like she just eats all, too. She's all, all she does girl. is she all, all she all she does is eat fucking hot Cheetos and Takis all day and, oh and, my god! Oh. And like McDonald's quarter pounders, like she's not having a good oh diet. She's god. disgusting. Oh, like imagine that. How is dude. that the girl like you want to show oh. you? I honestly, I, I I guess I need to tell this story. I'm like haunted by this. So the morning that this broke, the news the news story broke, whatever you want to call it. I was well, like classic, like I think what a lot of men do: wake up, hit the shitter. Go through my phone, just scroll on Twitter. All was immediately. I'm just seeing Odell, Odell, Odell. Like, what did Odell do? What happened everywhere? I'm seeing this. I'm like, all right, what's going on? So immediately, just type in Odell Beckham in the search bar, like trying to figure out, doing my investigative journalism, trying to figure out what it is. Immediately, I see the clip, a no jumper thing. So I'm like, all right, this must be it. Click on it, watch the whole video. So then I'm like, okay, that's what happened. I'm I. I was not feeling great. And I, I'm taking the shit. So then I, I go off the video and then I start looking at the replies because obviously I always like, I think, think sometimes the replies to things on Twitter can be even funnier. And I go in the replies and the first video 
oh, no. first thing right under it is just I, it was unavoidable. Like it was like I it was like I went down and just bang oh, in my no. face. It was the most disgusting, vile thing I've ever seen. It was a man with his mouth open, and it was like it's like a three second thing. I'm just a girl, or I look. I would assume a, a girl taking a disgusting wet shit directly into oh. his mouth, and I literally immediately turned into a. I I threw up. I was on the shitter, and I literally was like, like I was gagging. Literally grabbed the garbage can. That thank God it was within arm's reach, and threw up in the garbage can while I was this taking is, a shit. This isn't like I know people are probably shocked by this whole adult thing, but this is not like an. I won't say it's not uncommon. It's very uncommon. But the whole poop play thing is a one. It's a porn category. It's called. It's scat definitely porn. real. No, it's definitely like a real thing in the world. If people are into it, it's called having a scat fetish. And I don't know what happens, what kind of fucked up shit has to happen to you in your childhood that you were into that, but it is a real thing. And I, I don't know, man. We don't do pour one out anymore. We haven't in a while, but pour one out for Odell and on, which, for, maybe pour one out, pour about out of a bottle of peroxide on his fucking chest. Like, like she, Slim Danger said there was. Like, this is just the most, one of the most vile things I've ever heard. And I really hope that if this continues, the thoughts next door, the no jumper exposing celebrities and athletes and shit i hope we don't hear oh this is the wildest shit we hear i don't want to hear any any more poop play i don't want to hear about celebrities getting pegged although i could totally see dwight howard getting pegged because there was talks about it. he was fucking trannies i don't know i just want to, this chapter with these hoes exposing men i said it before i want this chapter to be closed because it's just not the platform that they just oh brother well i think you're in for a rude awakening because i think the chapter just opened pal i think we're on page one I think we, I think we're chapter one, page one. I think that's where we're at. I think, I think the floodgates are now wide open. I, I guess if we're on the topic of, it's not the next topic on our on our list, but it's in in part with what we're talking about. It's things in sexual nature, I guess. Um, it's a very, it was a very brief, brief clip that went viral of uh, the Joe Budden podcast this week, and it was him from an old podcast, him playing with Rory's dog. And he was like tickling the dog in a weird way. And they're like, what the hell are you doing the dog? And he's like, why is it that I always want to touch the dog and, you know, make it feel good in his privates. And they're like, what the fuck are you talking about? Um, and he's like, ah, oh, nah, 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 I'm just kidding. And someone tweeted the clip out and said, Joe, Joe Rogan, I mean, Joe Rogan. Oh my God. Not Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan's the king. Um, Joe Budden is canceled, basically saying that he fucked around with this dog's like dick or whatever. It was seemed, it was a joke. It went viral for a little bit. Everyone thought Joe Budden was joking, and then court papers got leaked, or alleged court papers that got leaked of, from Sin Santana's deposition, trying to divorce Joe, saying that on multiple occasions he jerks off his male dog because he quote unquote says it is his duty as a dog owner because there are no bitches for the dog to get off himself. Bitches is a male dog, if you don't know. When you, word it like, when you word it like that, that actually is, like, it was one of those things where it started weird, and then when you said it like that, I thought it was kind of funny. But <laughs> it's kind I, of funny. You think it's, like, a noble thing that he's no, 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 his no, dog no, no, get no, released? I don't, think, I don't think it's noble. I just think, like, just the way this being, like, oh, like, it's my, like, just, like, rationalizing yourself to be, like, jerking off your dog, like, saying in your head, like, oh, like, you know, like, there's no bitch from the fuck. So like, I got to just jerk him off. Like, that's like that being like your rationale, like just that alone is funny. I don't think like, I don't think anyone should be jerking off their dog, but I was like, just the rat, just like trying to like using that, like uh, using that like language to try to like rationalize yourself for doing something like super fucking weird and fucked up is kind of funny. Is it, I'm not saying well, it isn't I, fucked I up, I'll but is it, is it that fucked, fucked up if he's doing it from the point of view is like, my dog needs a release. He's, he's probably all pent up. And I'm just like, they did this on a South, an episode of South Park where Carmen, Cartman like milks the dog. And the dog is, I mean, obviously the dog's going to be happy because the dog's just fucking nutting. But I don't know. That's I, what I was going to say. I guess I like don't if, see where Joe Budden's coming actually, from. But like, if, he, if, he, if, he, if he brought the dog to completion, I, think, I, I don't think you can argue that the dog like didn't like it. I don't think the dog's necessary. It sounds so fucked up, but I don't think the no, dog. No, it's, it's ne- fucked up. I'm I'm making jokes. Obviously, I, everything it's, it's fucked up. Right obviously, is in jest. But. Is that abuse though? Because if he, if he's like like just just rubbing him a little bit, like give him a little tug, is is that considered abuse or is like do you think that like oh he's a monster? Or do you think this guy's just fucking weird? I would say more weird. I wouldn't say he's like a monster, but I would say he. I would say it's weird as fuck. Yes, it's very fucking weird. There was a kid oh, in my high school. I think it's super weird, but I guess I will say not. 
I guess not really in his defense, but I think just in terms of like um like divorce lawsuits, especially with someone like him who like has like a lot of has like money that she's trying to obtain, obviously. I think I feel like those lawyers literally sit you down and are like anything that you can think of that he does that's like off putting or like literally any type of way. So I could see like where if that if that I, was the document from way before this happened. No, it, it all kind of happened in the next couple of uh, the last couple of days. Like, in, see, because then, because like then the video course. leaked. Then, or the picture. I think the the court the video leaked and the court documents like leaked somewhat after that. But then Joe came out and made a public statement, like denouncing everything, saying this is someone like trying to blackmail both him and his ex wife. And the ex wife came out and basically said the same thing. But they didn't necessarily like vehemently deny anything. He said like you tried to tell, say I fucked my dog, all this shit. Um. So it seemed like it was a little bit of a smear campaign and the court, the the paperwork did have some shit misspelled. So it didn't look all that proper. So I do think there probably is some degree of people try to blackmail him, but just the two, both the video and the paperwork just like leaves a a bad taste in your stomach. There was a kid I was about to say before, there was a kid in my high school. I'm not going to like, I'm if anyone's listening to this from my high school, his initials were CZ and if you, if you want to find out who it was, DM me. This kid was fucking so weird. But he used to jerk off his dog every year on his birthday. And it was just like his dog's birthday present. And I remember I heard someone told me this story where the kid had such a weird fucking nasally voice. And he was, I'm not going to say my other friend who he was with, but I will just say he was with John. He wasn't with John, though. And he's like, hey, John, it's Fluffy's birthday. You want to see something? And then like, he's like, sure. And he like, he looked over and he, the kid was just jerking off the dog. Then the dog nutted all over the kid's sheets and he's like, mm-hmm, got to change the sheets. And he would do it every year on the, on the dog's birthday. So people really do do this, I guess. He, you have a friend who watched the dog come from another kid's hand. He, he like turned and the kid was already jerking the dog off. And we were like 12 at the time. So like the kid was like, like, like frozen and like didn't know what to do. And then... But, I mean, the kid then told us all the next day at like, football practice. was like, look at this fucking weirdo. He's jerking off his dog. And the kid was just like, hey, 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 like laughing to himself. He didn't deny it at all. It was fucking bizarre. That's fucking weird. That's I some know. weirdo ass shit. That's some Long Island shit right there. Yeah, that's some weirdo Bayshore fucking dog No, fucking. no, no. This is not has anything to do with my geographical <laughs> location. I'm just saying there are people out there that I guess feel like they need to pleasure their dog. It's fucking weird. And moving away from poop and, and jerking off dogs, Travis Scott McDonald's collab. Oh, really food. Crazy. Let's go right into food. Let's go right into food, of course. <laughs> Perfect transition. What do you guys think about this? I, for one, think it was fucking cool. <clears throat> I think, shout out Travis Scott. They probably threw this kid like $15 million for this. There's no way they didn't empty the bag out on him. All oh, the shirts, sure. like, I see Tons. so many people hyping the shirts up, and Travis released a whole slew of merch in addition to the meal, which was uh, a quarter pounder with bacon, um fries isn't, isn't that all it is it's literally just like a, like a normal quarter pounder just with bacon a, and like a medium it's fry a, it's a quarter pounder with an extra slice of cheese and uh, and obviously bacon and then the fries come with uh barbecue sauce instead of ketchup and it's a sprite and apparently the sprite has less ice than normal i don't i don't fucking know why but that's that's the meal um and it's only well, six you know dollars why, so i guess you know why it has less ice yeah because because he's pulling he's wants that's to lean up. baby need a little room for that lean the thing i don't have a problem with him having a meal whatever the, I just think the merch was, was kind of whack. And I see people gassing it up. Like the, the jeans, like the jean shorts with the McDonald's patch on the back. I don't yeah, think trash, that's fly. Trash. I don't, I don't think that the shirts were that cool. I thought the chicken nugget um, giant body pillow was actually kind of fire. I would get yeah, that. Yeah, that was dope. I like that. The too. only thing I thought was really fire that they were selling was McDonald's X cactus jet styrofoam like cups in a 10 pack like you're just promoting mcdonald's is promoting the use of lean which i thought was hilarious <laughs> that he did that was one thing that made me laugh but overall like i think that everyone's bugging out for this travis scott collab is kind of corny shout out to travis scott for having a brand that big that could collaborate with mcdonald's i think it is more almost like mcdonald's trying to make itself seem more hip even though it's one of the biggest global image uh brands like mcdonald's is kind of seen as like shitty food shitty fast food even though i'm a big fan and maybe this is trying to put them in like a a little bit more of a higher echelon they are i don't know what do you guys think mcdonald's I, don't need to do a damn thing they don't need to do anything so why so you think this is servicing travis scott more than it's servicing mcdonald's 
Hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, it's always going to bring more business to McDonald's for sure, but McDonald's is fucking billion dollar corporation. But you don't think that all they wanted to like make themselves look cooler than like than who was it the last person that collaborated you're, you're with you're McDonald's? Trying to make your company like in, more in touch with the generation that is now, but like McDonald's is so world renowned that it could literally not do anything for the next ten years and be totally fine. I would, I want to dispute a couple of things. One, I don't think McDonald's is seen as trash. I would actually say, in terms of like fast food, but besides like the Chick Fil A's, where I think that like those type places are seen as more like high quality Cannot. fast food. I'm not putting McDonald's in that category. I'm saying they are like above. But I'm saying, I think when you compare McDonald's to like the people that are like the same as them in terms of like Burger King, Wendy's, like those type of places, I think McDonald's is overall viewed as like the top tier in that group. Wait, is that fair? Would you guys say that's fair? Yeah, but that, it's still – you'd have to, like, make tears for your fast food then because we're still saying Chick-fil-A is fast food. We're still saying – is Shake Shack considered fast food? Yeah. But uh, it's yeah. Not it's fast food? It's different, though. You know what I mean? It's different. Yeah, like, it, there's, it's different. Like, there's different – there's kind of, like – it's almost, like, subcategories. Like, where, like, Chick-fil-A, it's, like, you go there, like, you're getting, like, one thing. Like, Shake Shack's sort of the same. Like, you're basically either getting, like, a burger. I actually do like the chicken sandwich at Shake Shack. Very good. But – it's like you're getting kind of like one thing, whereas like McDonald's, you can go there, get nuggets, all types of burgers, chicken sandwich, all this kind of stuff. I think they're more on their own. Like when I think of McDonald's, I don't think of like Chick-fil-A though. Like when I think of McDonald's, you group them with like Wendy's, Burger King, yeah. such and such. And in that group, they're the king of that group. What I'll dispute with Colin, I think is that, I think it is doing probably in terms of relativity, Obviously, like, Travis Scott's net worth is not, the, like, the net worth of, like, McDonald's. Yeah. But Travis Scott got a fat bag. He obviously, he obviously is making out good on this, no question. But I think, you're, I think you'd be surprised the amount of extra traffic that you'd see at McDonald's because of this meal. Like, I think yeah. I'm, just, I'm, I'm shooting off the hip with this number. Like, I'm just guessing. But I'm, like, I don't have, like, uh, data or anything to, like, back this up. But I'm predicting, I guess you can say, that I think you'll see higher volume at McDonald's than like a normal day or a normal time because of this meal. I, I do that. see I Travis that. Scott is just such like Travis Scott is just he he's like a Kanye like he's that hype beast type thing like like where people are just gonna do whatever he does no matter what even if he makes like like uh, like which I, even though I've liked Travis Scott's shoes the one the collabs that he's done with Nike and stuff I think they've been fire. But I think he is the type where he could do what Kanye does in the future, where he can kind of, like, he just has such a stranglehold on this younger, like, hype beast, fashion, like, music type scene, where he can kind of do, like, out there things, and people will just do it. And I think that's kind of what he's doing with McDonald's. Like, I think he's, he's probably going to, if he like, because if this works, where he actually is, like, bringing more money to McDonald's, he is going to start getting some insane, insane money. If he can show, like, he can move the needle at a place that's as much of a staple as McDonald's, that's huge. Because I don't think there's a ton of people that could do that. But I think he might be one of the people that has, like, that type of, like, loyal, just, like, hype beast fan base. That if he puts a burger out, they will just go get it. Kind of almost similar to, like, a Supreme drop of clothes. Like, it's almost like he did, like, a McDonald's just, like, exclusive burger meal drop. And people are just going to be like flooding to McDonald's just to say they ate it. So I just looked at a, an article written by the Chicago Tribune, which is a pretty, pretty credited like news or not newspaper, online source or, or media source. And they said, and I've heard this from multiple people um, and seen multiple reports that the burger itself tastes like it's hot, more high quality meat and that it actually is an upgrade quality wise from if you were to just get like piece this meal together from the menu yourself, as opposed to getting the Travis Scott I guess combo, and I, I had wrong that it's it's more ice, not less ice, um, on the sprite. I guess that probably helps with the lean mixing, whatever. McDonald's is still uh, appropriate, like you know, supporting lean pr pr promoting syrup, like, which is yeah, pr promoting syrup, which is kind of funny. But uh, apparently, to some degree, it's it, they they put some effort into it. It wasn't just throwing it together. So I might actually try it on my way up. I'm going to drive this Vermont next week. I'm going to try uh, this weekend. I'm going to try it out. I just think I would have rather seen a Travis Scott like five guys or Shake Shack collaboration or something smaller or Travis Scott 
uh, not definitely not Taco Bell, but something, one of like the non huge corporate brands. I mean, all fast food brands are somewhat corporate, but I think it would, if you could have taken a, a smaller, I guess, fast food joint and made them get a little more bang out of it than, than like we're saying, McDonald's is getting a lot more brand recognition from with Travis Scott, but I think Travis is obviously making out more than McDonald's is. I would have liked to see, you know, him use his star power for a little bit of a, a smaller brand. But see, I think this is kind of almost the equivalent of like how, um, well, obviously Kanye at first did do some shoes with Nike, but I think this is kind of the equivalent of like, I, like I think, I like I kind of disagree with you in that. I think McDonald's is the right move. Like I almost think McDonald's is like McDonald's is kind of like the Golden Arches are like as staple as it gets. So I think linking with them is much better than linking with like a Burger King or like a Taco Bell or just like whoever. Like like I think McDonald's McDonald's has the most like. Like, there's something at McDonald's for everyone. I think that's fair to say. There's – at McDonald's, there is something for everyone. And I think, like – like I said, I don't, I don't like – like, I think the, the jean shorts with, like, the McDonald's logo are trash, but it's, like, it doesn't matter. Like, people – like, I guarantee they sold out. Like, he has that level of hype around him and around what he does and the things he touches where it doesn't really matter. Like, it doesn't matter if it's fire. It doesn't matter. See, now that you, like, I wasn't going to try the burger, and now that you've told me, like, that article alone, you saying the Tribune, saying that the quality of meat is better, like, now yeah. I have to try it. Like, now I have no choice. But in the I'm next, like, three right days, now. now I have no choice but to order the Travis Scott burger. Like, I have to. Mm-hmm. I absolutely have to. I also, my go-to meal. Oh, my bad. Go, Connor. Okay, I, go. If you're, like, someone of his stature, that you're not going to just have, like, Yo, if this is going to be my meal, like, don't make it just a fucking regular McDonald's cheeseburger. You know what I mean? So that's why I feel like you're getting the quality of it. it. Who knows? It could be the same fucking burger. But, like, I just feel like if you're someone that big and you're actually putting your name on something, that you're always going to want it to be, you know, the best. Well, you smile. It's, so cr- <laughs> it's so crazy that, like... Like, I think what you said is probably more likely that it is just the same, might probably just the same burger. No, it probably and, is. I agree. And we're just convincing ourselves this, and we're just like, uh, like, fuck it. I just think it tastes better. But now I am so intrigued now to fucking try this and see if it tastes any different. Like, I, well, I, I want to get the what... Travis Scott quarter pounder and get a regular quarter pounder and then, like, just see if I can taste it. Ooh, that's, see, that's the true test. Mm-hmm. That's the true test. But when I, I don't go to McDonald's and get burgers, I get the McChicken at McDonald's. So I feel like if I tried it, I just wouldn't even know the difference. Like if I was like, well, I think I think you I think you almost gotta like blind taste test it, and basically like, do it like put like get both like Jetsky said, get like a normal Travis Scott one, and then essentially like just get like a quarter pounder like a normal quarter pounder just like with bacon, yeah. and just see what which one you think is better like just and take them like just right. try to decide which one has the Xanax in it without without looking. You guys, <laughs> did you see that meme? It was like a, it was a, it was a, like, oh, a yes, fucking, yes, yes. It was a McDouble with a Zanny bar in the middle. It's like, this is the, tra- I just got the Travis Scott special. Can't wait to get lit. Well, you guys should <laughs> do that and we'll post it on social. I would definitely do that. I, I would to- like a blind taste test with both to see if I could pick which one was the Travis Scott one. I will, I will definitely do that. Cause my go to meal at McDonald's is a double quarter pound, is a double quarter pound with cheese. We can do it in the office next week. All right, let's let's do it. It's available till October fourth, so I'm and I'm sure in the greater Manhattan area. That are you guys? Are you are you guys going to be in? I'm going to be in Monday and Wednesday. Yep, yeah, I'll be in. I'm there. Pretty we much. we should go to McDonald's and we'll each we'll get well, all three of us can we'll get we'll get six we'll get like one of each. Yeah. All right, and then we have to be with the we'll do a blindfold taste taste test. All right, I love mm-hmm. it. All right, love it. Cool. So uh, Mantis, next week, so back. and we have to have man. Oh yeah, man, shout him out, Matt Mantis. Did go viral for his uh his ordering of the, the the Travis Scott meal, and I can't tell you I haven't laughed that hard in a minute when I watched that video. Just his mannerisms, the way he was talking, the way he was so pure with with like trying to kind of troll, and the lady just wasn't getting it, and it was like he was just like lofting her up like a a, a softball, and the lady was just whiffing every time. He's just like fuck, and then just kept trying again and again, and it was almost like that lady had no idea that there was a Travis Scott menu, uh, Travis Scott meal at the restaurant. Yeah. Well, no, I think what made it funnier was that him, which I was a shout out to him, that he caught a banger. Tip my cap, caught a banger. One VV. Absolute banger. But um, I think, like, the fun, like, I thought, like, one, like, the part that I thought was, like, one of the funniest was that him just, like, continuing to be like, Cactus Jack sent me. Yeah. And then just, like, just being like, what? Like, what? <laughs> he goes, a man named Cactus Jack sent me. He sent me. And, like, and, and her, her just continuously saying, just being like, what are you talking about? And then he's just like, 
uh, the Travis Scott meal, and she was like, "Oh yeah, no problem." <laughs> like, just, like, like, didn't even flinch. Like, yeah, like that coming, coming right up, sir. And every fucking <laughs> McDonald's commercial says, "Tell him Cactus Jack sent you." And apparently, no one got that memo. He's an actual worker there. I'm almost curious to see if it would work now, if the video went so viral that it, if, if it would, uh, if it would work again, or if they literally would just be like, "Oh yes, you want the medium Travis Scott meal or whatever." <laughs> I don't know. We got to try it out. Um, last topic that we'll just hit on real quick. We've obviously we filed everything six nines done, not because we're six nines changed because we're, we're journalists. Six nine is, has been trolling so hard as he always does with his, the approach of his album coming shitting on little jerk shitting on all these rappers that can't sell over 45,000 units in the first week. And six nines album title tales dropped September 4th. Um, it's official first week numbers will be out tomorrow also when this episode airs it'll be out and he went from being projected to sell 150 copies the first week to now being only able apparently to sell it's ranged from as low as 30 to as high as 60 at, since they adjusted the numbers so he's a lot lower than what he was initially projected and he's definitely in the realm of the people that he was trolling the reason his shit's not going to sell as much as it was projected was because they're discounted bundles so that people can like pre-order your album with a, a, a merch bundle like a t-shirt mm -hmm. a sweatshirt and the album and billboard is no longer counting those they weren't supposed to disclude them until october but now they're just including them early probably because of six nine because but it doesn't seem like his album is going to chart at all where he thinks it will be i don't know if you guys listen to it i listen to it and it is probably like the most hot piece of trash i have listened to all year it is fucking garbage it's terrible you obviously put no effort into it and it, it, i'm not just saying this because six nines is scum i liked six nines first two albums granted his shit was more believable then but it seemed like he was putting way more fucking effort into the music this seemed like it was just something he threw together and thought off the hype he could just throw some fucking bullshit at the wall and people will eat it up and the album was terrible. He, no one would do press with him, so he didn't go on any big interviews. He did a fucking video with the Nelk Boys and did an interview with Jake Paul because real rap media wouldn't like interview him, so he had to do it. Yeah, like, I, you know, the, a the, a fucking shout out Million Dollars Worth of Game, Gilly. He literally like called Gilly, like basically begging him to come on Million Dollars Worth of Game, and he was like, "Fuck no." You're right. The literally the only thing I saw, I watched the video with the Nelk Boys, and you know, obviously, I've seen him like we've seen him on Instagram, all that, whatever, like running around doing the videos. But there was like a weird aura around when I don't know if you guys watched the Nelk Boys video. I did. It's very they awkward. They basically did a sec for the people that didn't see. They basically did a segment where the two main Nelk Boys, like Jesse and Kyle, they were interviewing people. Like they just had like like man on the street type interview where they were setting it up where they'd have people like line basically come to interview. They would kind of just set up be like oh like what do you think like this and that like whatever like like be like oh like do you like you like like six nine lyrical like whatever like just shit like that like they or, basically or, like, said the girls, i think they made oh, him like, would you like would you fuck six nine like kind of thing and then he would just pop out from behind and like surprise them so they would kind of turn around and just be like six nine like in their face they did and a there fuck marry kill was tupac biggie six nine was one of the main questions and obviously everyone said like kill six nine six nine would come out of the corner and be like oh you want to kill me or oh you think i'm a rat and then they would have an order awkward interaction from there it was very, there was just a weird, I watched it with like a few of my boys and there was, just, we all kind of agreed. There was just this like weird energy around it. Like where it's like people, it's like, you're not, even the, even the dudes that were like talking shit to him, like it's not like you're going to like, just like blatantly like talk shit to his face. Like it's just one of the, like, I don't know. It's like, it's, it's always, it's easy to talk shit about someone behind their back until they're like looking you dead in the eye. And especially when it's that much of like a, not, I'm not going to say not like starstruck, but that, that moment of like shock of actually just, like, looking him, like, face-to-face. -face. Like, it's like seeing a ghost. And there was just this weird aura, just awkward, like, weird energy. Like, it almost was, like, it was almost, like, for the Nelk boys, I get it from their perspective where it's, like, when you get the opportunity to do that, especially with their type of audience, because their audience is definitely more of, like, a favorable to Takashi 6 9 audience. Yeah, it's a bunch so of... So, like almost, with them, I understand that it's, like, and the, the video is doing a, a tons of views on YouTube. So with that, with them and what they do and their audience, I understand them doing it. Like, I don't like, I don't like fault them for like doing it, but I can even feel with them. There were like, they felt this kind of weird, like energy around it. Like, like, it, like I'll put it like this. When, when I first watched it, I thought when they started doing the shit, I thought it was going to be a lot funnier than it actually was where the energy was just so like weird. It just wasn't that funny. 
I don't think that they were paid to do it, but I think they no, I don't think so either. Definitely saw it was a, a clout grab, and it just the vibe didn't feel right. It felt like Six Nine was kind of unsure of himself. He wasn't really as cocky as he normally is, and it just I feel uh, as if he's starting to feel that people are really not going to fuck with him for a while. I will say though, I listened to the entirety of his Logan Paul interview, and he did. No matter what, when he's like in his interview mode, he commands the attention of the room. He gives a great interview, whatever, whatever, whether he's spewing bullshit or not. Like I listened to the whole thing. I was interested in everything he had to say. And he talked all about being in prison. He talked about like his entire experience, why he snitched, which he's obviously really good because the music is fucking trash. I really do think that this is the, the fall off happening in front of us. I do think though, he should get start a podcast. I, and it sounds stupid, but I think he could make more money having a podcast and, and, and being a fucking Twitch streamer and just being a clown and, and yelling at people and just being entertaining because he is entertaining. He's a captivating person, for lack of a better term. Uh, you don't like him. You don't like what he stands for, whatever. He's entertaining on camera. And I think after this happens, he's, you're, we're going to see that. But he said that in the interview, he said he signed a $13 million deal with 10K Projects and he has two more albums on the way. So I don't know what's going to happen. I don't like, he's not going to make the money back for this album. If it sells that little, no, bit for, it, so. for sure. Not, not even close. And I think what's happening, like, I think he's in a spot where if he, as long as he's like smart ish with this money, I don't think he's ever going to like go broke or anything, but I think we're seeing the, I think I'd said this before, like when at first, I think we're seeing in front of us, the appeal, like, time over time is going to graduate because now it's like that initial of him just being gone for so long after stitching and then just popping up the initial like shock factor or whatever you want to say like that's gone now like now that's over and now it's like he's trying to be like a real human being in like society and people are just like yo like we don't fucking like you like we don't like what you stand for we don't like what you're about like what they just not like just not with it and i think now that's got to be a scary feeling for him because I think he talks so much shit because he was actually doing these numbers, especially before on like some level. That was the whole and thing. His numbers were bigger and he had more clout than everybody and his views were better. And that's what I'm saying. It's like, now you can't not working. Like once that, once that is like, once that's gone, which apparently that's the case right now, like once that's gone, that's a big, big problem for you. Cause now like that was the only thing he had. Like he's like, Sam, 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 a rat. Like I'm doing more numbers than your favorite rapper, like this and that. Like, you ain't doing – like, you're not you're not doing more numbers. He literally said, it. look at Lil Jerk. He like, sold 45K first week, and now he's so, about projected to sell, apparently, on par with Lil Dirk. And Lil Dirk was in the comments. Like, I, I thought – there was some part of me that thought he was just going to be able to keep this up and still be able to get the viral hits off the, off the one, I don't know, YouTube single. But when it comes down to just album sales alone, his – Music talent isn't high enough to, to drive it. And now that people are just sick of him, the antics aren't high enough to drive, uh, big enough to drive it. I don't think – 6 going to fall off musically. I don't know if he's going to fall off, like, celebrity-wise. I think he'll still be making the news for antics. I think he'll be doing mm-hmm. – I really think he should, he's going to do a podcast or something like that. I, I'm not no, saying I, I want to listen to it, but, but I think I could totally see him doing a podcast. No, I agree with you. I think that should be, like, doing those kind of things should definitely be, like, his next – like, if he wants to make money, that should be like the only thing with him is with podcasting the only the only real way to make money is advertisers and i definitely wouldn't say i definitely wouldn't ca- uh, categorize him as advertiser friendly so i mean i think that's going to be a t- get like listeners but i think i think it's going to be a tough way for him to actually make like real revenue just based on i don't know how many advertisers are going to want to really fuck with him like that he might have to start selling fit tea then because obviously they don't give a fuck about who, who they who they work with. I don't know. It's it, We've talked about it. When's the fall off going to happen? When's the fall off going to happen? When's the fall off going to happen? And we are legitimately seeing the fall off right in front of our eyes because even though people are getting sick of him all before this, all throughout quarantine and all throughout the summer, he was still doing crazy numbers on like the singles, but it just doesn't translate over to an album. And I think this is officially the, the fall off. And is Mr. Snacks Curry still here? I'm still here. Oh, you went, you went dark, but I mean, that's that. He, he, I think he's, I think he's out of here. And I think he's, 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 we're, like I said, we're going to, we're seeing the, the fall off in, in, in real time. He hasn't spoken out yet. It hasn't made a public statement since the numbers were projected to go down. So we'll see what, what he says. After the official numbers are out. I can assure he won't be happy. And in, in lieu of that, my slap of the week 
will not be a 6 9 song, but it will be Celebration by Cool and the Gang. I don't know if you remember the, that song. Celebrate good times. Come, Come on. on. Everyone dun, remembers dun, it. Dun, 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 dun. Cool's been on uh, Breakfast, too, hasn't he? What was that? Wasn't I'm Cool sorry. on Breakfast? Yes, I'm sorry. I got a text. He has 100% been on Breakfast. And the reason why I picked um, him as my sl- – that song as my slap is because not Cool, but Cool's brother – died today sadly cool's brother so cool's name is ronald and i think the brother's name is roland so some very similar names but he was one of the founders sadly passed away so r.i.p to cool of cool and the gang um but celebration is my slap of the week and everyone should celebrate did we lose ev no, no i'm here i'm here you think he's disappearing on my thing but yeah, that's so that, that's that's my slap celebration cool in the gang um i'm going with off drugs by i don't know if it's notice or notice um, it's some um, hip hop rap song. <laughs> Off drugs by Notice or Notis. N O D I S. I'm gonna go with. I've been listening. I've I've talked about it multiple times in the podcast. My great road trip, like '90s, 2000s playlist. One I'm gonna say. This was the banger in middle school. I think for me it was seventh grade, like beginning of seventh grade. And the fact that the, the New York football giants are going to be playing football on Monday night. Yep, we fly high. No law. You know it is falling. And I remember, I remember playing, like, playing football and getting a sack and doing the balling thing and then being like, you need to leave this game, sir. I was, unejected. You out? I was unejected. It was a game we were blowing them out. And there was like a minute left in the game and they were like, they were like, it'd be best if you kind of just like, you took a That's seat. Awesome. It'd be best if you just kind of sat out the rest of the game. It was like literally like a minute left. The one time that ever happened to me, it wasn't a real game, but it was a scrimmage. And it was like a scrimmage before like junior high or JV or something. And I picked off a pass and I got like tackled. And then when I got, when I stood up, I spun the ball and I did like the hot hands over the ball. And some kid, whoever was like the fullback on their team, absolutely came from the sideline and blasted me in the middle of the field because we were on their field and I was spinning the ball and like dancing, doing the hot hands. So I kind of got taught my lesson for your showboarding without your head in a swivel. Not as, not as I didn't get it like ejected, but still yes, kind of yeah, punished. Yeah, that's I want to, I want to, I did not get ejected. I would definitely not say that was like, I, it wasn't. Please stop jerking off your dog. And everyone, please enjoy football this weekend. Enjoy the NFL coming back. I know we'll have lots to talk about next week. We'll see how the, the Jets and Giants do. We'll have, we'll have a whole bunch of bickering and back and forth, I'm sure. So I'm very excited for that. And make sure you follow us at 808 Smoke Breaks across all platforms. Follow Coops. There it is. Follow Wayne to underscore Jetski. Follow at Double Vodka Don. And catch us back next week. Love you guys. Peace. Peace and love.